You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having, but you don't need to be a man to join us. The Real Men Feel Show is produced weekly for your growth and enjoyment. Listen to us on podcast platforms including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many more. You can also watch the show on YouTube by visiting realmenfeel.org slash YouTube. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe on iTunes by visiting realmenfeel.org slash iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at realmenfeel.org and at facebook.com slash realmenfeelshow. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Real Men Feel is brought to you by The Good Men Project. Visit goodmenproject.com for more of the conversations no one else is having. Your reviews, comments, feedback, and participation are welcome during the live show and anytime in our Facebook group, on Twitter, or at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get into this week's show. Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. And what an exciting and interesting time it is to be a man these days. Uh, there is just so much going on uh, for me internally and for the, for the world, for politics, for society. And when there's a kind of times of, of chaos and possible overwhelm, you know, the, the, you, we can be all sides, all sides, I want to say sides, all people can be kind of perhaps feel themselves as being too sensitive. Uh, I'll see that kind of phrase thrown around a lot. And so that's why we're going to talk to uh, today's guest, talk about the notion of, of can, can men be too sensitive? And, and if that's the kind of thing that's coming hurled at you, what can you do about that? So I'd like to welcome coach and author, Mr. Matthew Solomon. Hmm, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. And I do want to say the, the, the show is brought to you by Good Men Project. And that's how I met Matthew. We are both yeah. contributors on the Good Men Project. And it was some of your pieces that really caught my eye and, and wanted me wanted me to get you on the show and, and talk to you in a more in-depth way. And just to jump into it, you, you, you call yeah. your column Too Sensitive. Too Sensitive. <laughs> so, so what prompted that? What does that mean to you? You know, I was, I was asked to, to come up with a name for a column and I was going through all these you know, different options and one of the things that I've been told my entire life is that I'm too sensitive. And at this point in my life, I'm 45. I actually, you know, with all the work I've, I've done on myself with, with my coaching practice being as successful as it is with, uh, I wrote a book that that's been, you know, getting a lot of traction. I, I realized that my sensitivity is actually what makes me good at the stuff that I'm good at. It's, mm -hmm. it's what makes me, uh, uh, a good coach. Uh, it it has me be tuned into. I know we're going to get into, you know, issues around sexism and you know, I, all over the the racism issues and all of that. It 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 it's, it's something that's really benefited me my whole life. Um, in addition to the challenges that come along with with feeling things and and then being being told that I'm wrong for feeling things or or for. Uh, expressing those feelings or you know all of that so it just seemed like a good um screw you <laughs> to the world to say yeah my column is called too sensitive and i'm too sensitive but right. here's so, what i've learned because i'm too sensitive so so it's 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 not like it's not a post of like oh i'm too sensitive it's like no i'm too it's owning the yeah. label kind of yeah yeah, it, yeah it's totally o owning the label throwing it back at you and it's like okay let's talk about it cool so you know i'm so much yeah. like you, I've been called, oh, you're so sensitive and you're too sensitive and all that stuff growing up. So have you, you know, from, from as young as you can remember, have you felt more sensitive than the average guy that you were seeing in your life? I think so. Yeah, actually, I mean, looking back, yeah, totally. You know, the, the other boys that I grew up with, I mean, I was, all, I was into sports, you know, but, you know, one thing I realized was I loved playing football and football was fun. And it was great to like get out and you know do all of that. But when I got into high school and dudes wanted to kill me, <laughs> I was like, "Hey, wait! I'm just here to have fun." I, I realized that there was a, there was sort of a different level of uh, intention and intensity um, 
that had to be worked out. And it wasn't until I, I started practicing martial arts to deal with the fact that I had felt weak my whole life because I didn't know what to do with that sensitivity and, and all of that. And I didn't know how to protect myself. So once I got into martial arts and started developing that, I got the mindset behind it. And while I, I still wouldn't want to go play football with the intention of, you know, cracking somebody's skull, um, I know more about what it takes to, to do that. Was your own sensitivity and ability to feel emotions, was that ever celebrated or was it only kind of mocked? I don't remember it ever being celebrated, honestly. I have uh, I have twin boys and my family, we, we celebrated in them. Um, and it's also, you know, it's funny because there's also a bit of, wow, they're really sensitive. We need to be careful. Hmm. Um, so there's a there's still a combination of that, and because they are so sensitive, I see how they're tuned in. I see how, like my my one son Gabriel has always been obsessed with uh, superheroes and firefighters and police, and when he was four years old ish, there was a little girl at the park who was barely one or two who fell down, and he like he picked her up and helped her up and made sure she was okay because that's what you know heroes do. Um, and so celebrating that stuff for sure, you know. So uh, one thing you said, I, I want to get back to, mm -hmm. you mentioned, or we noticed that your, your boys are sensitive, so we need to be yeah. careful. Yeah. So, so what do you, what do you think that meant? And even to take that apart, what does it, what does it mean to be careful? And why do you think you need to? Um, well, it was, it was, what was, I did I didn't say it, but it was something that I heard. Um, but it, it's, oh. I think I think it was in the context of we need to just be aware of that and be aware that they feel things deeply um, so that we need to be careful what we say and how we are around them. Um, it was probably more just for us to be aware that they're that they're sensitive. So we're not doing things like, oh, just man up, you know, because that's that's just going to shove it down like it did with me and it's just going to hurt them more. Okay, so, um, so more being careful not to shut down their sensitivity as opposed to, first I took it as, oh, we don't want to do things that they feel. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's mostly not wanting to do things that's going to hurt them. But there, there is also, a, you know, when you grow up as a male in this society, there's stuff that's going to come at you that you have to deal with. Like that, that's the, that was the logic behind it. And so... Being able to nurture that sensitivity in them, having them celebrate it for that, but also having them in martial arts so that they can, you know, work with those energies. I, I, the thing with me as a martial artist is it's not really just about fighting. It's about, you know, I can sense somebody across the room and what their intention is. If somebody gets in my face, because I know I can physically handle myself, I, I now have other options versus fight or flight, you, you know, so it, so it opens up a whole realm. It also um, gives me the, the opportunity to be like, hey, what are you so upset about, you know, and to, and to look at things that way to diffuse situations. Um, so that's, that's something that's been really beneficial in my life that I wish I had done earlier, uh, but it wasn't until my 20s yeah. that, that I got into that. Because, again, when it comes to, like, some men don't recognize the fact that they are human beings. And as human beings, we have the range of all emotions. Yeah. And, right. and, you know, I, much like you've already said, I, everything I used to really hate about myself and condemn and being the nice guy and being sensitive and feeling things, mm -hmm. um, now I see that they're one of my, my greatest gifts. And so yeah. I'm just interested, it's like, so, so when you recognize that in, in your children or in anyone else, that still there's the old, oh, we need to be careful. Because yes. later you said something, we, we want to nurture it. But wouldn't that be like phenomenal if that was our default thought? Oh, look at, they're so sensitive. How can we nurture it? Yeah. Like if that was the first top of mind thought. Sure. I don't know if we'd ever get there or if we're headed there even. But Yeah. And, it, you know, it's, it's tough because, uh, you know, the other thing that comes to mind is, you know, we're – we're a couple of white guys living in America, so we we have a, a lot of a lot of privilege around nurturing our sensitive sensitive side. Whereas if you look at other countries or parts of 
parts of Los Angeles or parts of you know our country where like it's it's war zones in the streets and you have to be tough and you have to fight and you have to be on guard all the time like there's there's not a lot of room for that sensitivity to come in you know so that's something that's got to be worked out also but there's also other cultures a lot like i've i've had the privilege to visit africa uh, twice on two different visits and one thing that struck me was all ages people boys and girls men and women a lot of people walking holding hands mm. in, in friendship yeah. and just compassion and, and touching each other and i'm like yeah. wow you, i don't see that at home yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that was interesting yeah. but so growing up feeling sensitive kind of you know getting bullied being noticed feeling different because you feel mm -hmm. it, looking back or to help your sons grow up or are there any any advice how, how do you best navigate growing up as a sensitive man uh, well all of it and i do this in my coaching too it all just starts with acknowledging what's there you know so when when they're upset it's it's really okay i get that you're upset what are you upset about do you know what you're upset about how, how do you feel right now what what is what's going on and just getting in those conversations and then looking at the ways to navigate that like, you know one of one of my sons uh my other son has a a really challenging time with making friends and his the way he interacts he has his guard up a lot and so he does things to protect himself and so it's it's I've had a lot of conversations with, well, if you scream in their face, they're not going to want to play with you. It's like, okay. So, so what might you do and say, well, I might ask them if they want to play. Okay, well, try that. And then they'll try that and then they'll be playing. Um, so it, it really is, you know, we all come in with, uh, with our shit <laughs> to deal with and to figure out. And then we, we take on stuff as we grow up in the first six seven years of our lives and then and then we have to work that out and so it is it's it's challenging man i it it's not easy i've i've had people comment about oh you just portray yourself as a perfect parent i'm far from that it is it is a lot of work and it's challenging and there there are nights where i'm like man i just failed today hey um you know and and i i feel it and i'm sensitive to that and i don't want to screw up and i don't you know i, I want to i want my kids to excel and to you know go forth into the world and make a difference and so it's 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 hard and so where along on your path did you get involved in coaching and the desire to kind of use your sensitivity and and help others with that yeah it's been it's been a journey i so i was raised jewish and I was bar mitzvah. I was really into everything, you know, all, all parts of that. And then as I would get old, was getting older through my teens and into my 20s, I had these questions that just weren't getting answered. And uh, I read a book called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh, which totally like, blew my mind open. And I, I, had, I had started to get into Kabbalah um, right before that. Um, because I had discovered that it's like, ooh, mysticism, what's that all about? It's got all these secrets and stuff. So I was starting to study that. And then I read this book and I was like, wow, um, the whole thing about organized religion, I see how that doesn't work for me. I want to explore more of this stuff. And so I went on this journey of, you know, the mysticism. I was in, I was in music school, but I was taking sociology and anthropology classes. So I was taking a class on uh, witchcraft and religion which was amazing and then i got into martial arts and through the martial arts it, it was a traditional kempo school but in addition to the like all the, the physical stuff part of our training was reading these books and watching these movies and studying about the deeper part of eastern culture and so through that you know my everything expanded and then i became an instructor so as an instructor i'm working with students all the time and and we would get into these discussions about their lives and so i start coaching them and helping them with their lives and talking about stuff and and all of that and so you know one avenue to another and then i'm taking relationship courses and i was in a i was married for nine years so we were in and out of therapy and seminars and all of that stuff um and then and then i took uh uh, seminar landmark forum 
um, which was a huge transformational thing, amazing weekend course. But then through that, I, I started to learn how to coach people, like, like really coach people and get them to go from here to here very quickly. Um, and so through all of that, I'm also at the time, musician, actor, filmmaker, you know, father, uh, went through a divorce. Um, and so I'm going through this journey. And then a couple years ago, as part of it, I was meditating. I started doing this meditation practice. And, and in my meditation, it just came to me, you know a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. You need to be sharing it with people. You need to open yourself up. And so I, I opened the door on Facebook and I said, I'm coaching now. And people showed up and it was amazing. Cool. So it really was kind of this spontaneous decision yeah. and, and step into the unknown for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And I, I've got back. I, I love that you had a spontaneous color of Kabbalah. Uh, I, right. I did a 10 month Kabbalah program this year. I, I just saw that. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. and my, my Kabbalah program ends this coming weekend as oh, I wow. cross the abyss. And yeah. So, and uh, it's, it's, I've been doing in it for 10 months. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever done. And I still don't know how to talk about it to anyone. I can't yeah. describe it at all. Yeah. And, all right. So that's, that at least matches your experience. <laughs> right. And it, you know, it's funny because, so that was back when I was, you know, like 22, 23 years old, I was looking into that or, you know, studying that. And then I went off on this other journey. And then in the last year, I've kind of come back around to it and all of a sudden it's showing up again. So uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm good. Yes. Yeah. See if the tree is calling to you and see what's next for you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Excellent. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, so to, to get us back kind of, uh, on the subject, you know, one thing, you know, the still, still the news of, of the moment is very much Judge Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court hearing, yeah. Me Too, that whole environment. But one thing that stood out to me during Judge Kavanaugh's um, confirmation hearing was when, you know, the last time he was before the Senate and he was at times upset and weepy and I mean, angry, but they, he really, there was a, an extended period where he was very teary. Yeah. And it was the one of it was a rare time that a lot of side didn't come down and crush this man for showing emotion mm -hmm. and especially president trump he has mm -hmm. ripped into politicians and fake tears and he has been on record saying he doesn't trust doesn't like doesn't doesn't appreciate men in tears um yeah. so i thought you know in all of this chaos I'm like well at least there maybe there's a little glimmer of of hope of accepting of emotion in in president trump through this as well yeah. um, but i just if, if that moment if that was a moment that you recall noticing or or how that um man it, it was all it was just hard to watch and listen to the whole thing for me um and the whole time i'm like all right if that was hillary doing that it'd be a whole different conversation if it, if if you know if mrs ford was doing that it would have been a whole like the, the the wall of judgment would have come showering down upon her for show you know for being an emotional woman you know and and so yeah he had the moments of tearing up but it for me it was overshadowed by you know screaming beer 27 times and 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 blaming the the clintons and the, the democrats and it, it was it was all just um it was a bit much <laughs> for me, yeah, and you know, and I get look. Oh, what were you gonna say? But I, part of me was watching. It was like, oh, good. Like I, I have a show called Real Men Feel. Like here's this yeah, man yeah. in the spotlight feeling. Yeah. I love it. But I was like, oh man. But I, is, I, and I, it, you know, saying all this out loud, it does feel the reaction was more political, and people stuck to this side. It wasn't really yeah. support or condemnation about these emotions. It was just everyone dug deeper into their mm -hmm. original viewpoint almost it didn't change anything yeah yeah i don't think so i don't think so um you know and if you know kudos to him for for feeling like he, he, you know he was being uh how do i say this because i i i don't believe him you know, I I mean, there, you know, may and this is, you know, not to get political, you know, may, maybe he just like doesn't remember. And I get that. And to all of a sudden be on on the verge of this huge opportunity and and this stuff comes up and he's like, but I didn't do anything. Um, I get that. I also didn't didn't buy a lot of it. And and just the 
you know, this is this is the Supreme Court justice. You know, he gets to be on the bench for the next 30, 40 years, and and this is like he can't contain himself. You know, and it, and and if it was a like totally along party lines, if that had been, um, uh, oh, who was the guy? Um, you know, like a Democratic. Yeah, garlic, uh, garlic. Gar Garland. Yeah, Garland. Merrick Garland. If that had been Merrick Garland, you know, the Republicans would, would have been like, we can't have this guy on the Supreme Court. He's, uh, you know, mentally unstable. So it, it's all just kind of, a, that part is kind of a sham for me. Uh, I feel, I really feel for the women and men who have been victims of, of assault and all of that and the whole movement of why I didn't report that, that came about and the, you know, I li I mean, my column coming out today is I've been listening to women is the title of the column. And I've been listening to women and I know why they don't report. And I, I have friends who have been assaulted. I have friends of friends who have been date raped recently within the last year who didn't say anything because what good would it do was their response. You know, and that's hard to sit with. That's really hard to sit with, especially you know, I, I mean, for women, it's it's a way of life, which is awful. And as a man, it's like, wow, what what do we need to do to make this safer for them? So is there an answer for that? You, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's it is coming to terms with the fact that the world, the. The world is not safe for women. And really just acknowledging that what you know, and, and we as. Like we as men, we like to rationalize shit and we, you know, we like to insert our, it's like, well, that's not how it is for me. No, it's not. But I, you know, I've never, I've never told my best friend, Jordan, okay, I'm going on a date, you know, with this girl, this is her name. This is what she looks like. This is where we're going. And this is her phone number just in case. And so many women I know that date do that with their friends just in case, you know, I go out walking at night all the time at like midnight two in the morning even 10 o'clock at night and i don't think twice about it but i rarely see women out and when i do they're they're in groups um you know walking down the street i i'm free to make eye contact with whoever i want i'm always seeing women pass who are looking straight ahead or looking at their phone or looking away from the street so the guys in the car don't notice them or don't yell at, you know, yet call out to them or harass them too much. And so there's all these things like I don't I've never thought about oh, I shouldn't wear this shirt because I don't want her to get the wrong idea. <laughs> right. You know, and there's like thing after thing after thing after thing that women do that if we as men just understood that. Then we could approach them with more sensitivity and more understanding if we approach them, you know, we there's. I, one of the things I think is great about online dating is, or, you know, on apps is this is a place that's set up for people to meet. And there's still, still all kinds of shit that happens that, you know, like the dick pics. And I, I have women friends who send me screen grabs of conversations and photos. And we, we just need to like rehaul, re, uh, educate men on, on how to be, on how to communicate, on how to, how we can show up in a way that's actually going to have us win um, because that's been missing. We're not, we're not taught, we're not taught any of that, you know, so outside. Can, yeah. Can, is, is a self-identified and aware sensitive man, is that kind of, can that be the, the leader for men? Is that, you know, do you, cause it sounds like you have a good report speaking to women mm -hmm. about these subjects. Do you find you can have that same rapport with, with men that are a little bit more closed off? Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because so I wrote a book called Man School Relating with Women in the Me Too Era, and that came out in June. And I've had men who and it's short, it's, you know, it's 75 pages. It's per perfect for <laughs> perfect for men. I've had men who have contacted me like, oh, my God, thank you so much. I didn't understand what women were dealing with. Um, I used to take it so personally if I said hello and they didn't acknowledge me back. And now I get that, you know, it's not it's not about me. and It's not about them. It's just, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a chapter on how to listen so that a woman feels heard. There's a chapter on on how we get to show up and be like the providers and protectors um, in this new age, which goes beyond just earning money and being able to fight. It's about providing a safe space and protecting the space and letting women know that that they're safe. Um, so I've had men who have contacted me who have thanked me for that. I'm you know doing shows like this where you know somebody 
it's like, wow, I, I really appreciate what you're saying. Come on and let's, let's discuss this. So yeah, you know, I've, I've been a man for 45 years. <laughs> um, and so the men who are open to it, like eat it up and they're having a lot of success in their lives. They're having success meeting women. They're having success in their relationships. And then there's the ones that are just shut off who don't want to hear it or, or choose to ignore it or, you know, and, and they're, a lot of them are having a hard time right now because they're the ones who, you know, will say something on a Facebook post and get the barrage of, of women coming after them, you know, for saying something that if they read my book, they would know not to say it. And, and then they're like, what the fuck? It's not safe to talk to women anymore. And I can't, I'm just going to, you know, go home and watch porn because like literally I've had men say, say that, you know, I can't, I can't talk to a woman in a bar and fe literally you said feminism teaches us women don't want us to talk to them. So I'm just going to stay home and watch porn, hmm. you know, and that's not the case at all. Women, women need us and want us. They just, you know, they need us to show up in a certain way and they need to feel safe. Right. It's, it's, it might not be. It's not that you can't talk to women anymore. It's more that you can't talk to women the way you always used to anymore. Yeah. That's the yeah. differentiation. Yeah. I, I hope that more people are, are seeing, mm -hmm. but, but maybe not. Hmm. Yeah. So you've hit on a, a few key points I'd, I'd love to yeah. drill in more. And, you know, certainly listening is, is huge. And I'm sure most guys, you know, I have ears. I listen. Uh, yeah, I heard, I heard everything you said. <laughs> so can you, are there any tips you can have to, to really be a good listener? Yeah, with with women especially, it's more about the experience of what they're sharing than the actual words and the details. And so, you know, if, if she's like, I, I had this really um, stressful meeting at work, and so I went to Starbucks to get a coffee just to unwind, and I waited in line, and the line took forever, and I ordered it, and they screwed it up, and so I had to wait for a manager, and you know, so the details are what we as men are here is, oh, so, you know, work sucked and then you had to wait in line and then they screwed it up. That's, you know, okay. But what, what, what they want, what has them feel heard is, wow, that had to be incredibly frustrating. I can't, I'm, you know, I can't even believe how upsetting that would be. I, that, that makes me, they want us to get what their experience was, how they felt, how frustrating it was, how they just wanted to like, curl up into a corner and, and shut down or cry for a minute or, or you know, or rage at the, the manager or at the Starbucks employee. And so they had to contain the anger. And so they, they want us to get on the same page with them and just feel what they're feeling. Um, and then and then it's like, yeah, okay, cool. You, you understand me, you get me, you heard me and, mm -hmm. and we're partners. So, but, so it seems like a, if, if a man kind of remembers the facts, he thinks yeah. he listened. Right. But miss the emotion, miss the sensitivity of, of yeah. the experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, an, another another term that's been around for a long time, but is more and more out there. And I do see a lot of guys like, what the hell does that mean? And, and a safe space. So mm -hmm. could, could you what do you mean by a safe space? Yeah. And how can someone make one for anyone else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, just, we just build it. <laughs> we just get our hammers and nails. Right. Need more concrete <laughs> tools? Is that yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great question because that is that is something that comes up and it, it really is um it's being able to hear whatever she says and not react to it you know so if if and to not try to correct her not try to insert my opinion on it so if you know if we take that example i just gave with the starbucks thing you know if i'm sitting there and i'm like well why didn't you just you know talk to the manager earlier or why didn't you just calmly say well this is my you know then it, it starts a whole war because it wasn't safe for her to express herself because now i'm trying to correct her now i'm trying to fix her tell her there's something wrong with her um if if you know if she and i are having an argument about something um or she's expressing something she's unhappy with with me if i get defensive and start firing back it's no longer a safe space now she can do that for me also it's not like this isn't all just i coach a lot of couples so it's not like you know she gets to say whatever she wants and he just has to take it it's it's really listening for what's going to make a difference for her and being able to 
get curious about her experience so that she feels like she can express herself. You know, women really want and need to just express themselves and say what they need to say. And it's not, it may not make a lot of sense at times, or it may be all over the place at times. And we can just like really be present and engaged. They'll get all that stuff out, you know, and then, and then we can, and then we can connect. Um, so it really, it it really is just about being able to say and express themselves and, and feel heard. Cool. Yeah, because a, a very traditional view of masculinity is to be a fixer, a, yeah. a doer, always taking action. But to 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 realize that oh, just to me being here mm -hmm. and holding holding someone's gaze and being willing to listen to them without yeah. my needing to come back at them with with a comment or a suggestion or anything mm -hmm. can actually be easier to do once you get used to it and is really what that other person needs mm -hmm. yeah yeah like you know i was uh somebody i was i was dating we had this we didn't really argue at all but we had this one argument um about schedule and, and timing and stuff and, and um she just got you know really upset and and <laughs> like the look on her face and like i could see it and i I started to get defensive and it started to escalate. And I was like, okay, hang on. I, I want there to be love present. So what, what are you upset about? And then, you know, she said everything that she needed to say. And I started to see her perspective on it. And all I said was, you know what? You're right. And I'm sorry. And then like the tension dropped a little bit. And then I, you know, I moved in and I was like, look, just, can we, can we just touch? Like we just held hands for a minute. And we talked for a minute, my tone got soft and then her tone got soft and then we, you know, started to laugh and then it was okay, you know, cool. Where, whereas in the past it would have just been like, oh yeah, well I said that and you did that and it was just, you know, World War III. Right, right. It, the, yeah. there, there's can be, there can be more power and, and gains and peace and love and whatever you're after in de-escalating as opposed to always escalating. Yeah, yeah. And it. And the thing with that I'm that I'm always coaching on is what are you committed to? Are you committed to there being peace and love present in your relationships or not? Because if you are, then then you got you're going to make choices. You need to make choices along those lines and it, and give up. Well, I have to be right or I can't be wrong or I have to win this fight. I have to win this battle because if you if you're if you're coming from that place, then the, the relationship is just not going to work. I, I, I love that that's one of your questions. What are you committed to? Because mm. um, just think about it now. It, it seems to me that that's, that's something that's missing in a lot of men's lives. They, they're they not committed to anything. Mm -hmm. So they, they are just really in the moment and reactive to whatever's yeah. kind of come their way. There is no bigger picture or a reason or a why that's kind of driving them. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is funny, you, along with the two sensitive conversation is the the viewpoint of men is we are non-committal like we have commitment issues and and it, it's usually in in regards to relationships but it's also you know you could apply it to our lives yeah we're not uh, unless we're taught to focus and 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 have the why like you were saying have a, a bigger purpose we're not and that's the same for any human like we, we just bounce around and and you know <laughs> like react to that, react to this, react to this, and and you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that spin you have. Yeah, because men are kind of oh, you won't commit, you know. And I always thought, oh, it's about to women, it's about relationships. But no, yeah. men have a problem just committing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <to> anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. And I know for for me, when when I when I have experienced, even when it shows up again now, um, I think my hesitancy to commit to something or really dedicate myself is that it's it's the wrong thing. That this is I'm setting myself yeah. up. I've made a mistake in my commitment to something I'm at. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, because we don't want to screw up either. Right, and again, <laughs> especially as a, uh, uh, as, again, as a self-identified sensitive man, mm -hmm. I yeah. feel that failure more sensitive, so I would be, I'd, I would build more walls. And, well, if yeah. I don't try to do things, I can't fail and be upset. Hey, right. I've got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't work like that very well. No, no. Cool. Yeah. You know, I, uh, on your website, I noticed that you you called yourself the uh, the coach for the modern soul. 
Yeah. And, and I, I love how that sounds, but I, I mm. wonder if, if you could define what the modern soul means to you. It, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, I believe that we are in a new phase, a new uh, era of men and women. And, not, and you know, it's like I, I, I talk about men and women, but there's the LGBTQ community and and I, I think that we're in a more fluid space. And so the modern soul is, is really about, it's not what a man's role is and a woman's role is. It's about what do you want and need? What makes you happy? What has you feel fulfilled and empowered and on purpose and inspired? And, and that, cause that's all the soul stuff. And when you're coming from there and when you're really feeling drawn to something and excited about what you're doing every day, that that's your soul being fulfilled and so the modern soul is it's really focusing on those things and when i work with clients it's it is you know what makes you happy what has you feel good what do you want to be doing what does that look like how does that what's your experience of that and we get into that experience we start experiencing those things awesome yeah. and um to i feel like i'm jumping around a lot but then maybe this is my sensitivity because <laughs> i want to ask you know and we start with the notion of too sensitive, but, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you directly, can, can you, can you, Matthew, be too sensitive? Not really. Okay. I, I, I can be accused of that. And I can, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, yeah. I guess that's what I'm trying to get. There's, there's a difference for people observing and calling it that way. But you, yeah, you, I'm trying to think of times that, oh, no, I'm feeling too much. This is like, I'm too sensitive to something and I need to change this. And I can't come up with it. Yeah, well, I think, you know, when 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 things start, it's all with how you how you feel and what you're experiencing. So if I'm feeling something really heavily and it's sending me into a depression, I wouldn't even still call that too sensitive. It's just a matter of okay, I'm feeling this and I'm having these feelings, so. What do I need to do? What can I focus on? How can I use that sensitivity to tune into something else? And and there's a one of one of my teachers and a really good friend of mine, uh, Guru Marikalsa, um, is a he has this book called Senses of the Soul, and he teaches a course, Senses of the Soul, and it's all about how our our emotions and our feelings are barometers. You know, they're they're warning signs. They're um, what would be the opposite of warning signs? They're, they're the GPS for the direction we want to go in. Uh, and it's so too sensitive. No. Um, can things affect me to a place where I feel really, really, really shitty? Absolutely. And so it's, it, then it just becomes a matter of managing those feelings and emotions. Yeah, that, I've always been, not always, <laughs> I used to think emotions were horrible and sucked. I didn't want anything to do with yeah. them. But yeah. as I've grown up and accepted them, yeah, that. Our, our emotions are our navigation system. They are the, our internal GPS. And, you know, if, if I'm if I'm calling myself too sensitive and I don't want to feel something, it's because I'm resisting it that's making it kind of last longer and me yeah. be more painful than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when I'm willing to feel, you know, better than I ever thought I could be or feel worse than I ever want to feel, it, it passes quicker than if yeah. I resisted it. Yeah, yeah, turning turning into it, that's a big, mm -hmm. a big, big thing. Um, because, yeah, I used to resist that also, but now when stuff comes up, it's like, all right, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to journal about this, or I'm going to meditate on this, or I'm going to talk to somebody about this. Yeah. Um, there was a, an article that I wrote uh, the, about the, the time I called the suicide prevention hotline and got, <laughs> got placed on hold. Um, and it, like, I was in a space where I just didn't want to talk to anybody that knew me at that point because i had talked stuff out but i was feeling all this stuff so i called and i talked to a stranger and really all that needed to happen was i just needed to express myself and then i, I felt so much better yeah yeah i've i've uh you know i i've attempted suicide multiple times and mm -hmm. i've been at the point of thinking i'm about to attempt and I, and i just once i called a suicide hotline and it was just i had to tell someone yeah. I feel like I want to do this, but I know I don't. And I yeah. and just saying that out loud. And I don't think I was on the phone for two minutes. And I was like, all right, thanks. I, I think I'm good to go home, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that, that 
again, that power of a stranger that, so, mm -hmm. well, that's a great example. If that's a safe space. Here's someone, he's not going to yeah. go, what do you think you're doing? You're like, it's not someone that's going to give you a grief. It's not someone that's going to fight you for what you're saying or feeling or, or challenge you on it. They're just mm -hmm. there to just be as, um, be this place where you can just regurgitate whatever emotional bile you're, you're needing to get rid of in that moment. Yeah. And yeah. it works. I mean, it worked yeah. for me. And yeah, totally. I felt, I felt better. I was glad that they were there. Um, and I've, I've known people that have worked that job and that's going to be a, a hard job. And yeah. especially with someone who's sensitive to just hear the, the turmoil and the grief and, and the shame just coming in always. And, yeah. you know, not knowing, you know, we're talking about how we appreciate that as a stranger, but then that other, that stranger doesn't know, like, I don't know if that guy, you know, went on yeah. and had a happy life or is dead. Yeah. I don't know. You can't, you can't, yeah, you can't follow up yeah. with anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. <sighs> But uh, well, I'm glad we're both here. I'm, I'm yeah. glad even if placed on hold, you were you were you gotten to in a timely manner. I hope. That's it, yeah. <laughs> when uh, yeah, and that's again, that's kind of a sad state of uh, where we are too. That that crisis lines are so needed and are so busy that someone you know really needing to be heard has to just wait even longer. Because mm -hmm. right? yeah. I know for me in that moment of like, all right, I'm going to do this that 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 there's a risk in reaching out. So you took a risk in placing yeah, that call. Totally. Yeah. And, and you're, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're having fun with it, laughing about it now. Were you mm -hmm. able to, in that moment, like when you were put on hold, were you upset, furious, anything? Um, I, so my, my writer creative mind, um, I, w I saw the humor in it. Like just this, how ridiculous is this? Like, you know, Please hold. We'll be with you shortly. Like fucking really. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I was in a. It was a, it was a heavy place for me. I mean, I. I, I um, well, the other part was before I made the call. I was laying on the floor in my bedroom, and I just I didn't feel like getting up. I couldn't get up, and I was staring at my ceiling fan. And and at one point I was like Saigon, shit you know the the opening scene of apocalypse oh, now yeah. you know so my mind is kind of always working like you know movie scripts and that's because i'm a, I'm a writer yeah. um and yeah it was it was um yeah i just felt very uh like i didn't know what to because i was i was clear because of my kids i wasn't going to but i wanted to be able to and that, that was the thing. It's like, okay, I know I'm not gonna, but that doesn't make me feel better yeah. <laughs> knowing that I'm not going to do it. And so, and that was why, that was why I had, I had reached out because I needed to come to terms with the, the fact that I was in this place in the first place. And, and I like, you know, I'm a coach and people respond to things that I say. And I've, people have told me I've, I've saved their lives by, things that I've posted have made a huge difference. And yet here I am in this moment with so like, there was just so much stuff going on all at once, you know, family stuff, relationship stuff, specific stuff with my kids, specific stuff with work, a movie, a movie project that had fallen through another thing that had fallen through and, and, and just all at once. And it was like, fuck. Yeah, I get that that turmoil. That's almost when 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 I, when I was younger and life sucks. I'm checking out. I'm out of here, and I would just yeah. take an action. It, that that was in a sense easier. Yeah. But knowing that I'm not meant to die, knowing that I and I need to stick around, knowing that there's stuff to do and I want to be alive, yet yeah. having the suicidal thoughts, that was like that was more challenging. That's what would like rip me apart. Like why yeah. do I want to do something, but I know it's not what I want to do. And that, 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 that dichotomy is yeah. that, that torturous zone. Mm -hmm. And then I, yeah, I would picture, you know, what, what are, what's the rest of my kids' lives going to look like, you know, dealing with that? How are my parents going to deal with that? My sister and, you know, my friends. I have one of my best friends lost two of his friends to suicide within the last year. You know, I was like, fuck, I don't want him to go through that again. You know, and so, and then feeling all the, the guilt around that be, and, and understanding, which maybe is, is the one 
or is a silver lining in all of that is being in that place has me understand why somebody would get to that place. You know, so if somebody calls me up and they're there, I can be like, yeah, I get it. I've been there. And what's, what's interesting is there, there are other healers that I follow and I'm really inspired by who all have similar experiences. You know, I can, I can name, you know, four other new thought leader, coach healers off the top of my head that I know had attempted suicide at some point in their lives and then had a, had a, a shift and are who they are today. Yeah. You know, and, and that's something, God, you know, we're, again, we're just not taught stuff. We're not taught how to cope with our feelings. We're not caught, taught how to communicate. We're not taught how to be intimate. We're not taught any of the stuff that's really important, you know, growing up. We're just not. And, and that's something that it would be really great to implement more of a, more of a thing than, you know, we have community circle once a week where we just, you know, yeah. talk about all this stuff going on in school. Yeah, sort of humanity training. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's something. So, I mean, it's, and well, you, your book, Man School, kind of taking, mm -hmm. here's things that people aren't being taught and let me give it somewhere, yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah, on an even bigger scale. Sure. More wide ranging. Yeah. And it's, uh, again, it's not a surprise to me that, um, you know, the, the best leaders and healers and speakers and communicators have had, you know, darkness in their past. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that made me go public with, with my years of, of depression and, and suicidal thoughts as, as an adult was that when I was a kid, I, there, there was, I saw no one like that. Like, mm. you're suicidal until you died. Like, yeah. I never heard of, like, oh, there's someone that said, oh, decades ago, I really want to die. In fact, I tried, but I'm glad I am still here. Like, I never, yeah. I wasn't seeing that anywhere. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. the, uh, you know, the, the, the too sensitive notion that can have us um kind of beating ourselves up the most and and yep. feeling the, the worst of pains when you allow for the whole range that that sensitive person also has the sensitivity for the for the other end and to feel better than they ever thought they could too mm -hmm. right because when i was growing up i thought happy yeah. people were were crazy i thought they were in <laughs> denial and they just they weren't realistic you know but yeah. uh, no there's even even in, in the chaos that we have today there are plenty of things to be happy and feel good about sure yeah. sure and it, it's funny because in the, man, humans will argue about anything. So if you look at the, like, even the, like the spiritual community, there's the, the love and light crowd, and then there's the shadow work crowd. And then there's, well, you're spiritually bypassing and you're um, focusing too much on the darkness. And, and there's, there's points to both of it. And I get it. And, you know, it's like, you just, you just can't, post anything or, or share anything without there being some sort of op like I even posted uh, a couple days ago I went and saw a star is born it was fucking amazing it's actually it, I would I would say it's one of the best movies I have ever seen and I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of movies it was amazing and someone was like oh well you never saw the original Judy Garland one so your opinion means nothing to me and I was like wait what <laughs> that's so mean why would you even say that um, you know but we you know and she probably didn't even mean it that way, but it's, but it's like, you know, we take things and we're used to being in debates and especially social media, it, it, it connects us, but there's talking about being too sensitive. There's such a heightened state of volatility that, you know, it's like everybody feels attacked and everybody goes on the attack and I have to, I have to respond to this and you know crush them with with my words and vice versa and it's like ah that's not how that's not how yeah, it works a, yeah there's got to be a better because it, it's not social media like no. it's not an accurate term <laughs> it's at not all social, no. yeah it's uh you know it's it's you know it lets <laughs> our easiest worst aspects intermingle easier you know yeah like that you, you, you before we started the show you mentioned you had saw last week's where i really did this impromptu conversation with a couple other men about yeah. the Kavanaugh hearings. And I wanted to do that because, you know, I was seeing things just being written with, without emotion, without conversation, without nuance all over the place. And they were pissing me off, pissing other people off. I'm like, I, let's, I want to talk to someone about this. And I wanted to talk to people that I didn't agree with. 
Yeah. And because th that's that's the power of social media. Like right yeah. here, right now, this is the power of social media. People that have not physically met people across the country being able to socialize on media. Yeah. Like that's yeah. really what it is. It's not just, you know, trolling and trading comments and, you know, looking to see who you can upset today while you're, you know, walking around on Facebook. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, it, I'd love to see if they can all soften and return or, or not soften or, or go deeper, truly become social, yeah. not just name calling, but mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a power in in being willing to hear somebody else's perspective, like just being able, being willing to hear it without, like if you if, even if you look at the, you know all the news program panels and the you know, um, real time with Bill Maher, which I you know I've watched for years, and you know the, it you say stuff and you either get cheered or you get booed and everybody's like, well, you're an idiot for that. Oh, you're an idiot for that. And there's no like, okay, let me, let me really try and wrap my brain around your perspective on this. And, and even with, you know, I, I mentioned with the guest you had last week who was talking about Kavanaugh, his life being ruined to me, it's like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Um, but I'm willing to hear, you know, well, how how is his life actually ruined? And is he willing to hear, <laughs> like, no, his life, he's going to be just fine. And that, I mean, now he's confirmed anyway, so he, he you know, that's, it's a moot point. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, there's the, the really masterful communicators are the ones that have you feel heard um, and can, you know, it's not even, whether they change your mind or not, but they, they have you feel heard, you know, and they, they, you get that, okay, they've at least listened to my opinion. So now we can have a, an actual conversation versus a, a debate. Right, because that's the thing, a, a conversation is not a debate. And even in a debate, you know, if you go to a, you know, a strict Ivy League debate, it, you're, no one's changing each other's minds. It's presenting yeah. arguments. Right, And, right. you know, we've kind of, uh, lost that ability we don't present arguments we just fight <laughs> yeah 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 and then people talk over each other and yeah. and you know all of that and fill, filibuster and <laughs> and it's yeah so it's okay what's the point so do, we, do you do you have any social media tips for a, a sensitive person is it just you know cancel your accounts and and leave or <laughs> is there a better way to engage uh, um social media for a sensitive person um I mean, there's always being being mindful of what you're looking at and who you're following and what their what the messages are that they post. And if you find yourself just getting angrier and angrier and angrier, may, maybe it's time to take a step back or you know follow some other people. You can un unfollow people for a while, also. Um, yeah, I, it's it's not just a social media thing. It's it's really a life thing, and and so whether you're on social media or not, the more that you can set up your life. Like I wake up every morning and I have a journal by my bed. I write 10 things I'm grateful for and 10 uh, I am statements. You know, I am happy. I am secure. I am, you know, so grateful for my children. I, you know, whatever that is. So I start off there and I usually do some sort of meditation. So I'm in a positive space right when I wake up, because if I don't do that within 10 minutes, like I'm onto the negative and I'm picking up my, my phone and I'm looking on Facebook and I'm looking at like all the crap that's going on in the debates and all of that. So it, we really do need to get into nurturing our minds and our hearts and our souls and all of that. And the reason why my clients, like things shift for them with usually within a couple of weeks, something major shifts. And it's because I'm like, if you like going to the beach, go to the beach, go today, go tomorrow, make sure you get there. You know, if you like, you know, being in nature, go for a walk, just get outside and do something. And so that's, that's the most important thing, you know, and yeah, social media detoxes are great. And, um, knowing when to walk away from certain threads is, are great, but, but even, yeah, I mean, it, it, at least that there, cause then there's the whole other side of, um, 
be, being mindful about how you're interacting with people also. You know, one, one thing that I, people always point to me about is that I, I deal with the, the conflict online really well and I'm very level-headed and, you know, I don't usually resort to name calling and attacking and debate. It's, you know, it's, it's more of like how I am now. It's just very like, okay, I got your point and what about this and let's look at that. Um, but that's, I guess, a, a different, different topic. Yeah. It's, it's, you, so you're talking about bringing mindfulness to social media, but yeah, for most people, it seems that that's an avenue to be mindless on. Yeah. Right? It's oh, totally. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Mindless. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, before we wrap it up totally, I just I wonder if there's any more kind of communication tips, interaction tips, relationships you, you want to share. Well, the, yeah, one of the main things is we all individually have our own life experiences. We all have our own filter that we see and hear everything through. And for me, when I was married, um, I always felt like my wife, ex, now ex-wife, but wife at the time, thought that I was lazy and a loser and no good and all of that. And so if she said, hey, will you um, help put the laundry away? What I heard was, you know, you sit around doing nothing, you're a lazy loser, I need you to do something for once. But all she was saying was, would you help me put the laundry away? And so once I realized that that filter was in the way and that I wasn't hearing the actual words, it was like, oh yeah, of course I can help with the laundry. So with every single thing we have, a, like there's there's the words I'm saying, there's the words you're saying. And then there's the, the thoughts I'm having about what you're saying and what I'm thinking you're meaning. And then there's the thoughts that you're having about what I'm saying and what you think I'm meaning. So we, there's four conversations at least that are happening at once. And so the more that we can get that you've had your experiences in your life that shape the way you see things, and I've had my experiences that shape the way I see things, neither one of us are wrong neither one of us are right it's just it's just how we see things the more that we can come from that the more that, that we're able to have those conversations communicate versus debate and so that's that's the thing it's just realizing yes you didn't grow up the same way that i did especially if we're talking about men and women or different races or different religions or like all of that like that's that's the, the basis for a lot of the um arguing that's going on is people just not being able to grasp okay a person of color has a whole different set of experiences than i do so so tell me what your experiences are so i can understand what your experiences are versus well this is how it was for me so you know that's the way it should have been for you right yeah, yeah. experience is our best teacher but we've got to be aware enough that we haven't had every experience that is possible mm -hmm. yeah right Right. And even like you and I being both, like I said, white men in America have still had different experiences. Where we grew up, who we grew up with, whatever religion we were raised in. Um, I think we're around the same age. So, you know, we probably have similar stuff there. But, you know, who knows? I mean, there's. there's... Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I really appreciate your time and your insight and your sharing and your sensitivity and <laughs> your mindfulness. Um, what's, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you, to find you? Uh, well, my website is coachwithmatthewsolomon.com and I'm on Facebook. My Facebook page is Coach with Matthew Solomon and then Instagram and Twitter is Maddie the Glue. And you can find all of that on my, on my website, coachwithmatthewsolomon.com. Cool. And do you have any more book plans? Uh, well, I'm doing a re-release uh, in a couple months of Man School, and then I ha that one was more focused on the experience of women and educating men on what women deal with. And so my next book is going to be more focused on men and what our experiences have been and how we get to evolve past that. Cool. Well, uh, and so anyone that's uh, finding us here live on Facebook. This was uh, our kind of the first time that Real Men Feel has just been live to the to the world doing this. We'll probably do this again later, and we might even give you a warning next time. But uh, <laughs> if you caught us here, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and you can you can learn more about you can read more from Matthew and myself at thegoodmenproject.com. Yeah. Um, you've just been a couple months been writing. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, to like two, three months, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Cool, cool. But I, yeah. um, I actually. I, I actually read all of Matthew's stuff, and I like it all, and uh, that's why he's here. So I encourage you to check it out if you're if you're not familiar with his work. Um, again, the Real Men Feel <laughs> Real Men Feel is brought to you by the Good Men Project. We thank them. Visit GoodMenProject.com for more of the conversations most men aren't having, but really should. <laughs> they're good. Yeah, they're good. Um, wherever you're listening to us, give us a rating, a review, a share, give us some feedback. Visit RealMenFeel.org. Check us out on Facebook, uh, and we'll talk to you again soon. Be well, everybody. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Until next time, visit realmenfeel.org or the Real Men Feel Facebook group and share what you thought of this episode. Please give this podcast a review on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel. Visit goodmenproject.com for more of the conversations no one else is having.